If you had one location to survive the zombie apocalypse in, which would it be? A school, a farm, or maybe a supermarket? All of these are excellent choices in Project Zomboid, but what if instead of just surviving at these locations, you were instead trapped with no escape? How long could these resources reasonably keep a survivor well-fed and happy? And more importantly, how long until you die? So today, I thought I would answer that question by seeing how long I can survive being trapped inside West Point's Gigamart. Surviving as an average Joe with no skills or advantages, the rules are quite simple. I can't step a single tile out of the building's premises, and if I do, I forfeit the game. So let's see how long we can survive inside. Well, here we are, hiding behind a desk in the middle of the zombie apocalypse while being trapped inside a Gigamart. How much better could it get? Anyways, welcome back everyone. Today, we are joined by Melody Jenkins, a complete blank slate who's gonna spend her first day, and more importantly, her last inside the Gigamart. Oh yeah, did I mention this was also during the zombie apocalypse? But yeah, today we are gonna see how long I can feasibly survive trapped inside a Gigamart. And right now, we need to do a lot of things. And number one, that's going to be killing all of the zombies inside so I can then work on my long-term survival, right? Because as many supplies as the Gigamart has, there's going to be a lot of food items and a lot of things that can go wrong if the power or water goes out and I'm caught unprepared. So yeah, we are going to start Today off with a very strong start, clearing out all of the zombies nearby, and hopefully after that being able to preserve as much food as possible, all of the perishables at least. So yeah, in order to do that, with the amount of zombies, we need a weapon. Now thankfully, Gigamart is a supermarket, so if we run downstairs and hit up the shelves over there, we should be able to get a weapon. And as soon as we have that, it's time to go on a small slaughter. So, let's try just that. Not before checking out these two boxes here, which has absolutely nothing. So yeah, we're gonna go grab a weapon. Oh my lord, that's a lot of zombies. Okay! We're gonna go around the zombies and grab a weapon. Hopefully we'll have enough time to actually pull it off. Okay, it's bad, it's bad, it's really bad. Someone get mom. There's at least 10 zombies in here. Holy crap. Okay, we made it out though. Now what we need is a weapon in which we were able to find a pickaxe. That would do just fine. Let's grab it, move around, jump around them, and begin killing these, these damn zombies. That was extremely close. But Melody is the new manager, and my first order of business is gonna be a couple of budget cuts. Now that feels a little bit better, and now that we have done that, we need to preserve food. Because if you look outside in the main area of Gigamart, we have fresh produce, fresh bread, fresh pastries, and fresh meat. And all of that needs to be put inside the coolers before any of it rots away. I need to hit the ground running with this because I am running with 30 minute days, which means we don't have a lot of time and we need to prepare right now. So I'm gonna grab all of these and shove them in as many freezers as possible, slowly eating from them as well. Though thankfully, on top of just having overall supplies in this place, we also have stuff like school bags and pairs of scissors to make my life transporting all of the stuff a little bit easier. So yeah, we're gonna move all of our foods over towards the freezers. Starting with the produce, moving on over towards the pastries, finally moving on towards the meats. Though I'm not done with the meat here just yet. Because even if putting them inside the freezers raw right now sounds like a good idea, I don't know how long the power is going to last in this game, and I would rather be safe than sorry already having all of the meat cooked up and ready to eat if it does go out early. So yes, we're gonna throw all of them inside the ovens, and as soon as we're done with that, we're gonna go sort through the back room, and lastly, we're gonna sort through all of the food inside the actual refrigerators as well. Because in the best case scenario, I would love to put everything inside freezers to delay their expiration date as fast as possible. It's already 8 p.m., so we gotta get moving. With all of the food being shoved inside a single oven, including all of the spare egg cartons as well, 
Alrighty, it looks like I burnt just about all of my food. That is not a good start at all, but I am able to salvage at least quite a bit of it. Never mind. <laughs> Gosh diggity dang it. This is already not going good at all. Well, we have that food if we ever get very close to starvation. I'm very sad about that, and it's because I went and grabbed egg cartons to cook up as well. We were able to salvage some ground beef and meat patties, so it's not the end of the world. Now that we kind of screwed that one up, I'm gonna go sort through the rest of the fridges here, grabbing as many eggs and other meat in here as possible. And we can worry about the back area on the second day. Anyways, welcome to day two. Day two's plan is going to be much like the same as day one's, but instead of taking all of the stuff in the front area, we are gonna move to the back of the store, grabbing any perishables along the way, putting them inside the fridges. Though on top of that, I also need to grab as many containers as possible to fill them up with water, because the water will run out and I will die of dehydration way before I die of starvation. So yeah, we're gonna be looking around for any containers, and even if I have to eat a massive jar of mayo to get one, we are gonna do just that. Though I am gonna start off with all of these sacks of food here. These potatoes and these cherries are going to go a long way, and they'll go even longer inside a proper environment. And now that we have around 40 kilos of fresh produce being frozen, we can move on to other things. Like, oh my god, like cooking around 8 egg cartons, and finally looking around for some water containers, in which we have a few empty bowls and mugs, a couple of kettles, some orange sodas, two entire watering cans, which is going to be perfect. Also some farming supplies, which I would be able to use if I could, you know, step outside into any other place that isn't covered in concrete. And lastly, we got ourselves a bunch of remoulade and fresh mayonnaise, giving me three bottles, one bowl, one kettle, two watering cans, two white mugs, two tumblers, three actual water bottles, and a bunch of, I guess, food that can be turned into containers for water containers as well. It's not a lot, I'll be honest. So my next plan after that is to fill up all of the water containers we do have, and then we are going to be on a strictly pure mayonnaise, orange soda, and remoulade diet so that I'm properly prepared for when the water does inevitably shut down. You know what, for a start, that's pretty good. It's not good enough to help me survive longer than a month, but it is something at the very least. And now, this is the part of the challenge to where I'm probably gonna switch from a live commentary style to more of a narrative, right? Because this is where the War of Attrition truly begins. We were able to put all the food inside the freezers, the rest is non-perishable and good stuff, and now it's just gonna be pretty mundane activities, aside from the occasional chopper event. We, of course, have a lot of non-perishable food, so my plan right now is to get as many containers as possible. Oh, also, I forgot to check the trash cans for other containers as well, but I think that's gonna be my big killer is gonna be the water. We could potentially get some by placing objects outside while not walking outside of the tile, you know, just kind of pushing out our arm to get rainwater. So that's an option as well. But yes, this is the point at day three where we can kind of calm down a bit, I say as I lobotomize the nearest zombie with a pickaxe, but oh, okay. But yes, <laughs> it's gonna be just mundane survival from here on out. So I guess I will see all of you on day three when I do some pretty boring inventory management. This is gonna be an actual slog for Melody, but I'm excited to see where we'll end up in terms of time survived. Though not before talking about today's sponsor, which is me. Anyways, if y'all were wondering about the sudden stoppage of all of my series, it's because my SSD died along with all the save files. So if you enjoyed the Vintage Story series, it's gone. Though I do still play Vintage Story and other games on my Twitch channel. This is also going to be the announcement of me finally uploading VODs to my second channel. So go check that out and subscribe if you'd be interested in that. Anyways, that's it. Thanks. And so for the rest of the first week, I decided to bring all of the freezers downstairs, upstairs, to kind of make them a little bit more easily accessible. 
eating all of the dairy products along the way because I know they would have gone bad first. And while the first week was going good, day seven would mark its own problem. For one, the water already went out, meaning the water I had was going to be the only that I have for the rest of my life. And two, the chopper event decided to drop at quite literally the worst time. Thankfully, we had barricaded a few entrances the night before, but nothing could have prepared me for the absolute hordes moving into the store. All we had to do was keep on fighting and to continue to have faith. There were quite a bit, so I had to lead them around the store and take frequent rests upstairs. But as time went on, we finally killed the rest of the event, surviving the day. After that chopper event scare, I knew the main room was unsafe. So I dedicated the rest of the day to grabbing all of the food and water downstairs to finally move it upstairs, so I didn't need to risk my life grabbing lunch and dinner. Though I did leave behind all of the pasta and dry food, as that would hinder me from the hydration losses. And now the wait truly begins. We had the water reserves, all of the perishables and non-perishables inside the fridge, and in a little bit of time, we made it to day 14 with fully stocked up fridges and no issues so far. Then the worst thing happened. On day 16, the power had finally went out, which means all of the food would soon go bad. So after clearing out some straggler zombies, I began the grind of eating as much food as possible to absorb all of the calories before the food would become inedible. Though this also had the benefit of being able to save water as the fruits and veggies give hydration back, which means I could literally just subsist off of vegetables for the time being. All the way to day 21. We had eaten almost all of the perishable foods, gaining massive amounts of weight, currently weighing 104 kilos. All we had left were 59 hard-boiled eggs and potatoes, but life continued to go on. I continued to rot in the corner and eat. Though, this was where I also decided to begin rationing out my food, so instead of eating when I was peckish, I would only eat when I was very hungry and on the verge of starvation. And soon, another two weeks passed by in little to no time at all. I soon became the sole protector of the Gigamart, and zombies stopped showing up as well. It was truly just our manager and a gripping sense of loneliness at this point. Though sadly, day 33 marked the end of all of my perishable foods. The potatoes had finally stopped giving me sustenance, and we now had to rely on canned food. And this was where time really started to blend together, and bouts of silence and mundanity. All we would need to do is kill a couple of zombies, open cans, eat, sleep, and repeat ad nauseum. Soon, day 50 was on the horizon. Nature started to heal. The taps were run dry, and the pile of cans has become an actual mountain. The cans were almost done, all eaten away, but life goes on even with the grim circumstance of low food. Day 55 was the day all the canned foods were finally eaten. We were down to a single school bag of food, but thankfully, it was very dense calorically, so it would have lasted quite a while. Melody had also lost quite a bit of weight eating only from the cans and potatoes, now only being overweight rather than obese. And I do have to say, this was where rationing became critical for our prolonged survival. So after a few more days of Blair witching it in the corner, we are finally at day 70. Rai decided to come back with in-game commentary, with our final days rapidly approaching inside the Gigamart. Um, girl, you live like this? <laughs> Hi there, everyone. It has been a while. As you see, I am perpetually hungry, and I've been rationing out food for quite a while. It is now day... Day 70, basically. It's day 60, nice, but uh, day 70. And I have to say, we are running very low on food. This is all I have left. Like, a few fruit jams, some peanut butter, some pop, and a little bit of water left. <laughs> it's not looking that good, and I think we're getting so dire out that we're gonna need to actually go down and grab the dry foods, like the rice. Oh, by the way, it's September now. It's getting cold. My character has been getting chilly because of the amount she hasn't been wearing. That is genuinely insane that we, we have made it to fall just chilling inside this place, like rotting away. By the way, I, I'm i still at 92 kilos in weight, so we, we have not been losing weight that much. It's a really good thing I bulked up on all of those uh, produce goods but we are very soon 
going to approach the end. There are a few zombies that have jackets, which are gonna be nice for me. I'm gonna bundle up. I'm gonna grab the rice and stuff, and I'll save it as a last resort, because I might still run out of water before I run out of food. We are working against the clock, you know what I mean? It is, it's rough out here, okay? And it's only gonna get rougher from here on out. Well, I guess I'll see you guys when Melody is quite literally at her limit. <laughs> Holy crap, Gigamarts are insane! Well, this is my last peanut butter. Might as well put it to good use. It's... it's getting pretty rough, everyone. Now, you might see I have nine soda pops left, and there's a good reason on why I saved those. But yeah, if you look at our pile here, we have 16 empty bottles, 102 empty tin cans, and I just am going through my last water bottle right now. Though we still do have a little bit of water left, and by a little bit, I mean it's getting rough. Okay, we're gonna go grab all of our watering cans, though. And we're gonna pour them into these empty bottles to better distribute them. And I think we're gonna have to breach into the dry foods like fully now. And I have a very good idea on how we're gonna be able to pull that off. I'm just gonna carry all the water with me. Being extremely like overloaded doesn't even affect me at this point. It's just, it's just whatever. I haven't went outside in, 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 in months. I've just been cooped up in here. Okay, waiting for a sign that anyone is gonna save me, but it's just been emptiness, just complete bare silence. But yeah, if you see, we have a lot of these dried peas, right? And what I'm thinking we do is I'm gonna drop off actually like a lot of my water here. We're gonna leave, uh, I would say the water bottles in my bag, right? And whenever we get into starvation mode, what I can do is I can eat a single, like the entire serving of beans, right? Which gives me minus 60 hunger and plus 60 thirst, right? But I have these pops here that'll give me minus 60. So if I eat one dried black bean like pile, then I just chug one soda after and that should keep me going for at least another 10 days or so. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, no, it's bad. It's rough. It's rough out here. Okay, I'll be honest. It's no one should live like this, but here we are. Okay, we're going to make it work one way or another. One dried lentil bag at a time. Bada boom, we're gonna eat that. It's gonna make us thirsty. And all we have to do is displace it with our pop. Bada boom, we've equalized. <laughs> we're gonna make it to a hundred days with this one. <laughs> it's actually cold enough out for me to get a cold. We are also starving still. How bad is it? It's, it's all right. We can help ourselves to one more bag of black beans and a singular pop to keep me all good. We only have four water bottles, by the way. It's... It's down to the wire. There's barely anything left. I mean, we have soy sauce, yeast, a bullion cube. <laughs> we do have some burned food, but I think I'd rather take my chances uh, not dying that way. Yep, well, I guess we're just gonna wait out the rest of it and see how far my supplies get me. Maybe I'll be surprised, right? Wait, actually, it's raining right now. We are so down to the wire. What I'm going to do as a way to get more water is to grab my old... Where are they? Where are they? These watering cans. We can leave them outside and we can collect rainwater. It's that desperate. Yes, I know. But we are so close to 100 days. I gotta try. And even if I have to drink the silly water, you know, it, it, it is what it is. As long as I don't step outside this tile here, I can drop down the watering cans on the other side right over there yes 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 soak up that goodness you are the only chance i have right now <laughs> yes okay we're getting water we're getting water we're gonna make it i've also been eating the lentils and beans by piece like piecemeal style which has been helping out a little bit it's oh wait we actually have a bowl of water right here what the heck okay that's cool but i think we're gonna make it all we gotta do is survive five more days. 
What really matters right now is if this tainted water actually kills me or not. We have gotten a lot more water in terms of this watering can, but it might just kill me as soon as I drink it, so this is my last resort. We're gonna fill up as many bottles as possible though, and we're just gonna continue to play it by ear. I'll let you know when I'm dead, or if I've passed a hundred days and I can die peacefully. <laughs> Oh, come on, eight tainted water bottles, one actual water bottle, and a dream. Let's see it happen, man. Well, this is it. We've run out of potable water, and now all we have is tainted water. We are going to drink an entire bottle of it on top of an entire thing of beans, and hopefully the two equalize out and we'll be okay. Anyways, bottoms up. <laughs> Oh man, that's so rancid. <laughs> that might keep me alive for a little while longer though. We're gonna get sick very soon. There it is. Are we gonna get sicker? That's the question. Oh yeah, we are. It's not looking good. I think that might be it. Maybe? No, okay, we can actually survive by drinking tainted water one, like, piecemeal. The only problem is that it catches up very quickly. Come on, three more days. <laughs> That's all I ask, man. Oh my god, this is not how one is supposed to live, but here we are. I think we're gonna make it as long as we piece it out. No, we're definitely gonna make it. All I have to do is wait till I'm, like, parched. I'll, I'll eat an entire thing. And then we just drink a full, uh, tainted water bottle? We'll be fine. All the food I have left are just coffee grounds and tainted water. That's it. That's my entire life at this point. <laughs> we get nauseous, we get queasy, we get over it, we get hungry and thirsty again. I eat it, repeat ad nauseum, and we have made it almost through the entire month of October, this method. <laughs> I think we are nearing our end though. It's uh, it's getting very dire, especially when these coffees only give me minus 30 hunger. I think this is it. You know, I, I, I just hate to say it, but I think this is. <laughs> though we still might be able to make it to the next month, even with all of my problems. <laughs> oh, November would be a good time to, you know, to, to kick the bucket. I doubt that's gonna happen because we are getting very hungry very quickly. But, you know, you can dream. Okay, no, we're getting parched. We can drink some dirty water. And surprisingly, we still survive. We are starving to death, though. And that is gonna slowly kill me as time goes on. I think we're gonna be able to make it to the next month, though. Never mind, it goes to the 31st. Yeah, no, this is how we die. So I guess I'll wait here a little bit, and I will see all of you when I am on death's door. This is such a miserable experience. We are ridiculously tired, starving, very bored, severely depressed, having a nasty cold, dying of thirst, severe injuries, and you know what? I'm gonna go out on my own terms as well. <laughs> it's it. That's it. Yep. We have finally died at Gigamart. We've eaten quite literally everything within the store, and we have survived for 3 months, 23 days, and 14 hours, killing 114 zombies. And finally, after that long survived, we have died. So if you want an answer, it's probably around 100 to 200 days, depending on how good you can actually ration out your food and how masochistic you are. This is a good end point for me, though. I will see all of you next time. Peace out, everyone. <laughs> I, I, need a, I need to take a break. This was actually like five hours of my life. <laughs> all right, see you later.